I don't know how many times we can go through the same charade over and over and over again, expecting to have a different response. We already know how the Iranians are going to respond. They're going to delay. They're going to, they're going to postpone. They're, they have no problem continuing in the negotiation process for as many years as it takes because they know that as they do, they can continue the development of their nuclear weapons, which is what they want anyway. But the one thing that they do really want, what they desperately need, is they need the sanctions lifted. And we've talked before about this on this show about sanctions, and, I, and I've told you that sanctions are akin to a blockade. And a blockade, of course, as you, those of you who uh, are students of history know, is an act of war. It is an outright act of war. So they cannot do commerce with the rest of the world. They cannot import gasoline. They've been sanctioned to death. Is it any surprise that everybody over there hates us? But rather than be yelled at for being a blame America firster, I want to talk to you guys. I want to take this to its natural, take something to its, this thing to its natural conclusion. Because Ted Cruz, in his announcement address, said, Under no circumstances should Iran be allowed to have a nuclear weapon. And for this, he was greeted with a rousing applause. Have you heard, oh, yeah, we believe in that, yeah. But what does that really mean? And that's kind of what I want to focus on here for the next uh, few minutes. If you're not going to allow Iran to get a nuclear weapon, then at some point, if they do not relent, and they have no indication, nothing that they have done, other than the president and, and members of his staff coming out and saying, oh no, I think we're, we're coming to a deal. Nothing out of Iran suggests anything close to that. Anything other than you need to remove the sanctions and then we'll talk. We'll have a deal when you remove all of our sanctions. And my question to you is, um, do you think that any amount of negotiation or any agreement that we might sign with them is going to stop Iran from continuing its nuclear program? Do you? Most of the hardcore neocons or nationalists would say no. So let me explain to you what a, a neocon is. They are, in the clearest terms, a staunch nationalist. They're the guys that roll around and they got guns, fireworks, America. These colors don't run. Those guys, those are neocons. They're the ones who believe that America is the greatest country on earth Everything that we do is great, and we ought to be out there spreading democracy around the world and killing evil tyrants, and we should really be, uh, we should be the new crusaders, fighting evil around the globe, and no amount of money and no amount of death and no amount of, uh, <laughs> no, no amount of anything is, should be avoided in the pursuit of bringing peace and tranquility to the whole world. So those are the folks who are the greatest advocates for war with Iran and not allowing Iran to get a nuclear weapon. And so my question to you is, if that's the process that you take, if that's what you believe, then at what point do you actually say, we're going to go to war? Yep, this is it. This is the line in the sand. Where do we draw that line? Is it after the uranium's been depleted to weapons grade? And so now we know, or we think that we know, because if we don't allow the inspectors in there, there's no way we can possibly know when that event actually occurs. We're going to have to use our secret spy network and then maybe know, kind of like the way we knew that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and that's why we had to go in there, because all of our intelligence was pointing at it. So we're going to have to rely on those same intelligence agencies to tell us when the uranium is actually at weapons grade and could be used to make a nuclear bomb. But no nuclear bomb's been made yet. So we may, may hold off on that. Maybe it's after they've begun construction on the nuclear device. Again, we'd have to wait and hope that our intelligence network was strong enough to actually be able to tell what was happening miles and miles underground in the development of this nuclear device. Or maybe it's after they put the device together and they actually have it, but they haven't put it into the ICBM yet, the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. And so maybe we decide we're going to go to war when that happens. The question is, and the question I would ask to Ted Cruz is, 
when, when do we go to war? That is a question, ladies and gentlemen, that no one can answer. No politician, for all of their platitudes, for all of their tough talk, can pinpoint to you, yes, this is the moment when we will go. Because nobody wants to be pinned down like that. And the simple fact is, Ted has no flippin' idea how he would actually handle this situation. And it's one thing to say, oh yeah, we'll go to war. We're not going to allow them to have a nuclear weapon. It's another thing to say, well, okay, where, where's the line in the sand? Obama's drawn red lines in the sand that people have violated. Where is it? And this is the problem with the doctrine of preemption, is that there is no clearly defined rule about if or when we will strike and on what grounds or for what reason. It really has to do entirely with sentiment inside the country. How convincing is the politician at being able to articulate why it's necessary and how much fear and hatred can they drum up for the opposition? We have a well-documented doctrine of preemption and how it has worked out as well as nation building around the world. Remember, we're, we're, the, the neocon, the staunch nationalist, believes in spreading liberty and democracy around the world and going to war to oust evil dictators and, and using a preemptive strategy if necessary. And now we have Iraq and Afghanistan, Egypt, Syria, Syria Libya, Yemen. How well is it working out? But you can look across from Iraq to Yemen Nowhere can you point to anything even resembling a success story. Long term, it fails. And my question is, why do we continue to push the same mantra, the same ideology? It's, uh, the, I don't understand why those of you who are such staunch nationalists believe that it is, there is an overwhelming need for us to go to war with yet another country who has not attacked us at all. And for whom a case can be made that we have already gone to war with them. We have already declared war against Iran through our sanctions. I'm not saying that Iran is a good place. I'm not saying that there are good men there. I'm not saying that we need to be buddy-buddy with the Iranians. What I am saying is it's not all one-sided. And if you believe in this doctrine of preemption, and if you also believe, as a, as a neocon would, that no amount of negotiation, no amount of, uh, of agreement is going to prevent Iran from seeking and having a nuclear weapon, then why not go to war right now? Why wait? We don't know how far they are along in the process. They could already have weapons-grade materials. They could already be assembling the bomb. We wouldn't know any different. Let's just go bomb them into oblivion tomorrow. Why not start World War III? If we're willing to do it, no matter what, why not now? And the truth is, we don't go now because we hold out hope that there's a peaceful resolution. Because war should be a last resort. War should be only invoked to defend our own individual liberty when someone else has attacked us. We protect U.S. sovereignty. We protect our liberty. And we provide a beacon on the hill for others who seek refuge from tyranny around the globe. Not only is it not our responsibility to provide freedom to other nations and other parts of the world, but as we've seen from Iraq to Yemen, they don't want it. They don't respect it. They don't value it. And in fact, they end up hating us more for even trying to provide it to them. I got to take another break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about this Cuba thing and also uh, some, some, of this, uh, some of the gun stuff that's going on. Apparently, gun sales are just skyrocketing. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So stick around.